The name of Sanford Fleming will go down in history for a host of reasons. A talented civil engineer, he was appointed chief engineer of the Canadian Pacific Railway and played a major role in surveying the route of the Trans-Canadian Railway and the construction of iron bridges along its way. In fact, we see Fleming in one of the most famous Canadian photographs, taken when the last spike was driven in on the transcontinental line. He is the imposing figure standing tall in a top hat and full beard. Also, it is thanks to Sanford Fleming that what we now call standard time was adopted around the world. Fleming was a constant traveler, and he realized that there were countless problems caused by the lack of a uniform system for setting the time. He invented a system that he then promoted tirelessly. Fleming proposed that the surface of the globe be divided into 24 time zones and that all the clocks within each zone be set to the same time, simply brilliant. While these significant achievements are very well known, Fleming was also a gifted draftsman and graphic artist. He designed the first Canadian postage stamps, and he also decided that they should be illustrated with the now famous beaver. He was only 24 years old at the time and had just recently arrived in Canada from his native Scotland. Here is what he wrote in his journal on February 24th, 1851, in Toronto. Breakfasted at Ellick's Hotel with Mr. Rutten and Honorable James Morris, Postmaster General, designing postage stamps for him. The new Postmaster General was charged with implementing postal reform in Canada and the adoption of a stamp to regulate port fees. A mere two days after his appointment, he was in discussions with the young Fleming on the choice of illustration for the first Canadian stamp. Of all the stamps issued at the time, this was the only one that depicted an animal, the Castor Canadensis. An appropriate choice for a young country in full expansion. Several sources of inspiration guided the artist in his illustration. The beaver is known as a patient and industrious animal. It is a symbol of skill and determination, and it played a pivotal role in Canada's development thanks to the great demand for its fur in Europe. Today, it stands as the symbol of the sovereignty of Canada, and we find it depicted on coins and crests. Fleming's unusual choice has played a role in its popularization as a symbol of Canada. Let's take a closer look at the stamp's design. The central image on the stamp is the beaver, seen in profile in its natural setting, busy at work on his dam. Under his feet is a waterfall and flowers, and in the background, a pine forest. A radiant, smiling sun lends warmth to the scene. Directly above the beaver, the imperial crown rests on a cluster of heraldic flowers, the rose for England, the thistle for Scotland, and the shamrock for Ireland, framed by the letters VR for Victoria Regina, Queen Victoria. The face value, three pence or three penny, is clearly indicated in the four corners of the stamp and repeated in the frame. This value corresponded to the price of sending a letter weighing no more than half an ounce, 14 grams, to a Canadian destination. Sanford Fleming was asked to design two other stamps as well, the sixpenny for a heavier letter or a North American destination, and the twelvepenny, a shilling, for a foreign destination. For these stamps, Fleming chose portraits of Prince Albert, soon to be the Prince Consort, and of Queen Victoria. A print, circulating in Toronto, was the model for the image of the prince. 
The choice of model for Queen Victoria makes for an interesting story and reveals something of the character of young Fleming. Two years earlier, on April 25th, 1849, the Parliament building in Montreal was torched by rioters and Fleming entered the burning building to rescue a painting by John Partridge, inspired by a famous portrait of Queen Victoria. He kept this painting in his home for a while. Other reproductions of the painting were in circulation at the time, including a print by Samuel Cousins, and all were possible sources of inspiration for the young Fleming. The new stamps were issued on April 23, 1851, throughout the country and all around the world, they sent out a new image of Canada. <laughs> 